Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem, an infinite sum with factorials or maybe reciprocals of factorials. So we have the one over two factorial plus four over three factorial plus nine over four factorial and then 16 over five factorial where we have the perfect squares in the numerator and the consecutive factorial starting with two factorial in the denominator. So that's what our sum looks like and we're going to evaluate this infinite sum. Obviously, there's always the question of does this sum converge and I'm going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha at the end as well. So first of all, how would you approach such a problem? If you know the sum of the reciprocals of factorials, this will be a little easier, but what is that equal to, right? So we can start with one over one factorial plus one over two factorial. Are you familiar with the sum? Let me tell you, there's a formula that we're going to be using. So let me give you that formula first. If you have n equals zero to infinity of x to the n divided by n factorial, which can be written as one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, so on and so forth. This can be written as e to the power x, an infinite polynomial that is the same as e to the power x, right? And of course, e to the power x will converge, right? I mean, for finite values of x, it's finite. That's what I mean. Of course, if x approaches infinity, then it doesn't. But that's not the question. So what happens if you replace x with 1? Then you get e to the power 1. So if you replace x with 1 in the sigma notation, replace x with 1, you get 1 over n factorial, which is the sum of the reciprocals of factorials. But you must start with 0, which is important, and don't panic. 0 factorial does not equal 0. 0 factorial is actually equal to 1. Why is that? That's a good question. We can talk about it later. Now, let's go ahead and expand this. Zero factorial is one, so it's going to be one, and then one again for one factorial, and then we'll have the fractions. And you probably recognize Euler's number, or E, is about 2.7, so this number is greater than two because everything is positive, right? So if you ever forget how many ones we have in the sum, remember this, E is about 2.7, so we have to have at least one plus one. If you had another one, that would be three, so that wouldn't work. See, exactly one ones, I mean two ones. So how do we evaluate knowing this sum as sum like this with perfect squares? Okay, we have a perfect method that handles this and it's called the sigma notation. What is sigma? Well, we just talked about it. If you replace uh, a sum with sigma, you can do it pretty much for this too. So how do we use sigma to write this, like what is the general term, right? That might be a good question. Notice that it's gonna go from n equals something to infinity for sure, right? We'll talk about the first term. But notice that general term in the numerator, we should have perfect squares, like one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, so on and so forth. Since the first term has one squared, we're gonna have n squared in the numerator. But notice that the denominator is kind of one more than n, so in other words, it's n plus one. And of course, n equals one is the first one. Get it? Easy, right? You just have to write it in sigma. And if it, you may not get it right away, but at least, oh, by the way, I forgot the factorial. Sorry about that. Let's not leave it like that because those are factorials. And you, if you don't get it to write the first time, that's perfectly fine. Just keep trying and don't give up, okay? So this is my sum uh, in sigma notation. How am I gonna evaluate it? Does having a sigma notation help? Absolutely, because now you can take the general term and break it down until you can make it look like this. See, that's equal to E. Great. Now, let's go ahead and break it down. First of all, N squared is not divisible by N plus 1. It's divisible by N, but that's not super helpful, in my opinion. Here's what I'd like to do. I want to turn N squared into N squared minus 1 so that it's divisible by n plus one using difference of two squares. But of course I can't just subtract, I have to add as well. So now I can break it down, okay? Let's go ahead and break it down into this, n squared minus one over n plus one factorial plus one over n plus one factorial. It's just adding fractions, but you do the opposite. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and factor n squared minus one, n plus one multiplied by n minus one. And n plus one factorial can be expanded, just do it once and stop put an exclamation mark. And for the one over n plus one factorial, we'll deal with this separately because we're about to get more terms from the first part. Now, 
Let's go ahead and split it up. But first, I want to go ahead and simplify this, right? How do you simplify this? N plus 1 cancels out. And N minus 1 can be split up. Let's do it. N over N factorial minus 1 over N factorial plus 1 over N plus 1 factorial. This may look messy, but don't worry. We're going to put it together. N factorial can be expanded once. So we can get that. And I want to kind of switch these around so that we can get a telescoping sum, which means a lot of terms, infinitely many, are going to cancel out. So I want to treat this separately. Okay. These two. And here I can kind of cancel these out. The first part is going to give me something nice. If you think about it, this sum with the sigma notation, n equals 1 to infinity. Of course, our index was 1, right? What is that going to look like? Let's go ahead and expand it. If n is equal to 1, it's going to be 1 over 0 factorial, which is 1. 1 over 1 factorial is going to be 1 again. And then you're going to start having 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. What does that look like? That looks like e, exactly. And if you change the index here, like replace n with k plus 1, then k plus 1 is going to be 1, which means k equals 0 to infinity, 1 over k factorial, which is the same as e. So just memorize it. It'll be easier if you do. So that's e. That's the first part. What about this one? Let's go ahead and handle this separately. Since that's telescoping, I can go ahead and write it as follows. n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n plus 1 factorial, minus n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n factorial. So you can kind of write it like this. If n is equal to 1, this is going to give me 1 over 2 factorial, and then 1 over 3 factorial, dot, dot, dot. And then from that, minus a gigantic sum, for n equals 1, it starts with 1, and then 1 over 2 factorial, and then 1 over 3 factorial, so on and so forth. You can stop once you get the same thing. And now, notice that this whole thing is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with minus 1. So we have this minus 1, which is the answer is e minus 1. In other words, 1 over 2 factorial plus 4 over 3 factorial plus 9 over 4 factorial, dot, 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 is the same as e minus 1. You can also think of it this way. You can kind of look at each sum separately. For example, this one is missing 1 twice. So that's e minus 2. And this one is only missing 1, 1, which is e minus 1. Their difference is negative 1 because e minus 2 is smaller than e minus 1. Make sense? So as a result, this becomes e minus 1. Now, do you know of a different way to solve this problem? Please let us know in the comment section down below because I'm curious. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and Happy New Year. Today is the second day of 2025. I hope you're enjoying it and having a great year ahead of you. And bye-bye.